All right. Hey there, and welcome to this episode. And so this is part two of a little series that I'm doing on um, spam mail, right, and how it applies to OCD and anxiety thoughts. So for those that don't know me, my name is Matt Cotty, and I'm a licensed clinical social worker and the founder of Restored Minds and the creator of the AAA Response. So if you haven't checked out part one of this series, please go do that because it will. this is going to kind of build upon that. And, and, and just to quickly recap, in part one, um, what we discuss is this idea of spam mail and, you know, how, you know, spam email became a thing once email, you know, became, uh, you know, kind of a popular way of communication. And the whole idea of spam mail is for someone to create some kind of outrageous headline that creates some kind of reaction. And then from there, once they create that reaction in you to get you to do something. Right. So it's, it could be, hey, you just want a million dollars. All you need to do is just send us your banking info and we're going to transfer the money to your account. OK, not a good idea, especially if you don't know who that person is. But if you're super emotional and you just thought you want a million dollars, that's going to your, your emotions going to oftentimes override your logic. And that's what spam mail is designed to do. It's designed to get you emotional. Right. And and then get you to do something that that person wants you to do. And it's usually for their benefit. Now, OCD and anxiety is not that dissimilar. You know, um, we have this voice in our mind that we experience and it creates these what if thinking, right? Or this what if thinking, this what if thoughts that are usually negative, right? Usually some kind of bad what if, right? So when that happens, it usually creates a, a strong emotional reaction within us. And then what happens is then we try to do something to get rid of that emotion or to prevent that catastrophe, you know, or the bad thing in our mind from happening. Now, the, the problem is, is that that paradoxically in help, uh, has us engage in a compulsive behavior or some kind of safety behavior, which reinforces everything and creates this loop. And that's why I always talk about understanding the problem of OCD and anxiety is a loop because it's not necessarily the thoughts you're having or the feelings you're experiencing. It's the fact that you're getting stuck in these loops. And that is how it works. It, it, what, it, what it does is it creates these what if thoughts that are the spam mail, right? In this analogy, because in, in the way that we can identify them as spam mail is because they have that big what if in front of them. What if this terrible thing happens? What if I run someone over with my car? What if I jump off this ledge? What if I snap and become this terrible person? These, these you know, it, it, again, it will always anchor in something that is quote real, right? Like people, I rarely meet people that worry about what if I get impaled by a, a unicorn? Right. That doesn't happen because people don't encounter unicorns, to my knowledge. But but, you know, people will worry about, well, what if my plane crashes? Well, you know what? Planes have crashed in the past. Right. What if, you know, I spontaneously drive my vehicle, you know, off a cliff? Well, you know, vehicles have fallen off cliffs before. Right. So like the mind will use these kind of outrageous scenarios and, and then say, well, what if that happens to me? And but but it's usually very low probability events. But, but because there is some element of probability to them, we become very anxious and scared and then try to make sure that that never happens. And that is the same thing that happens with spam mail. You know what? Like people do win the lottery. Not, you know, it's not very many, right? You know, like, you know, there are things that happen where these catastrophes happen, then that's try, That's why they try to hook you with a spam mail. They, they anchor into these very, very low probability scenarios and then try to get you to do behavior. That's the same way that OCD and anxiety works. It takes a low probability thing and makes it seem like it's extremely, you know, like it's right in your face right now. And then you may want to make sure that it doesn't happen. So you engage in behavior and that, that keeps it going. Now, what you need to understand is just like spam mail, the more steps you take, the more likely you're going to fall for it. Okay. So in spam mail, if you open the mail and you start reading the whole email, and then you look at what they say to do, you're going to feel more compelled to do that than if you just didn't open the email in the first place. Like one of the reasons these companies create spam filters is because people get ripped off all the time, right? You know, people literally people give these people money. It's, it's terrible, but this is what they do. This is how people make their living in the world. They just operate some scam and they come up with 
new scams again and again and again and again, and they just send it to the masses. And, and the ex, you know, and the idea is, is you know, one percent of people are going to fall for it, so we're going to get this much money. And and this is the same thing with uh, your mind with with OCD and anxiety. It's like, you know, and, and this is one of the ways that you can really look at this is like, okay, well, it, it's just the theme that you wrestle with, is because you can look at other people's themes and be like, you know, and you could acknowledge those are all possible things for you, but you don't worry about them. It doesn't matter that it, it's it's possible or not. It, it, in the same way, your theme is possible for other people. So if you're worrying about your plane crashing, other people don't worry about that, you know, but, but it's equally possible. You know, it's, it's not a matter of possibility um, that, that's more or less for you. It's just that, that this particular theme scares you. It hit, hit that emotional nerve, right? Oftentimes because it goes in direct, uh, it, you know, it's directly against, you know, who you know yourself to be or, you know, something that, you know, you don't want to happen, right? You know, for, for based in fear. And the entire point of this is that this is how the, the mind works is that when you, when it throws up this, what if thought, think of that like an email headline, if you click on it and go into it and try to analyze it, you're, you're going to get more invested into it and it's going to be scarier. And then all of a sudden, if you, you actually take action and do behaviors, well, guess what? You just showed that spammer that, Hey, you know what? This guy just bought from us. So what are they going to do? They're going to keep sending you emails because you've already given them money. You kept them alive. Same thing with OCD and, and anxiety with fear is like, if you do, if you engage in behaviors that keeps it alive, well, it's going to keep sending you these kind of messages because you kept it alive. It wants to stay alive. It, that loop wants to stay alive. It wants to live. So the less steps we take, and in fact, the further upstream we go of actually not just, so it's like, obviously we don't want to give them money, right? Which is the, the metaphor. And this is doing compulsive behaviors. Clearly that's something we don't want to do. But beyond that, we don't even want to read the email. We don't even want to start analyzing. We don't even want to click on the email. You know, and, and ideally we're not even checking our email, which is like all the time, which is metaphorically like being in our minds. We're actually, you know, being more present in, in our lives. And this is how the kind of treatment process or recovery process, should I say, works, right? It's like, yes, we want to eliminate all the behaviors, but also we want to start getting more out of our minds and into the present. And, and this is why the steps work like this, right? We kind of go from ERP and exposures to things like acceptance, commitment therapy, and mindfulness. And as we start integrating all these tools, what it's really about is not taking the face value of what your mind's saying and not getting involved in the conversation and not going into it and then engaging in all these behaviors throughout your day to neutralize whatever your mind's saying. It's really about, hey, my mind's coming up with spam mail. It's okay. It's allowed to do that. You can't, you can't prevent people from sending you spam mail, but you can decide that you're not going to click on it. And if your mom like, well, what if it's not really spam? You know what? We're going to take that risk. Just like I said in part one with a guy on the space station, you know what? If my $200 was really the thing that was going to save him, then like, Godspeed, my friend, that sucks, you know? But I'm betting this is spam now. And, and that's the same thing that we have to do with our mind is like, you know what? This seems like a scary thought, but you know what? I've bitten on this before. And I've clicked on this spam mail before and it was nothing before. And I've seen this pattern and that's the way that we start to identify spam mail or, you know, the OCD and anxiety thoughts is that the pattern that exists. So if I'm really stressed in my day-to-day -day life, or if I have a lot going on or my mind's racing, it's like, I'm more likely to get more spam mail. And the spam mail usually starts with what ifs, right? We start going back to the characteristic of spam mail and the whole idea is pretty simple. Don't click on the spam mail. Don't get in the conversation. Definitely don't open it and definitely don't do the behaviors it's telling you to do. Because if you don't do that, it can't stay alive, right? That scam can't stay alive. If you don't give them money, they can't continue. And that is really the, the core message here in this series, right? Is don't click on spam mail. Don't go into the conversation. And, and yes, is like, well, you know, always for certain it's spam mail. No. And, but, but the thing is, is we can use kind of certain clues, right? Like the, what if thinking, or especially if it's themes that you've worried about or things you've worried about in the past that, you know, are tied to OCD and anxiety, 
that's probably evidence of what this really is. So when you, when you know that, you can take that calculated risk in the same way when you get a spam email that says, hey, you just won a million dollars, click here right now and we're going to send it to you. You can take that calculated risk that that probably isn't true. But that's all we can take is calculated risk. So I hope this helps. And um, for those of you who are you know new to the show or if you listen or you've been with us for a while, we really appreciate your support by liking and subscribing as well as leaving comments and, and reviews on iTunes for us. It just helps the show. Also, we have resources for you over in the notes. Um, and also over at restoredminds.com, we have various programs and options to help support you on this journey to recovery. So thank you so much. I uh, hope this series was helpful for you guys. And I look forward to meeting you on the next series where we're going to talk about some fun stuff as well. So I'll see you over there. Bye. Thank you so much for watching that video. And so if you're struggling with OCD and anxiety, I just wanted to let you know that we have a free training for you um, over at Restored Minds where you can start learning how to use our AAA response to really break out of that loop and ultimately take back control of your life. And all you need to do to get access is just click the little link below and you'll be taken to a page where you can register today. Thank you so much.